Hi, my name is Mike Datto. I'm a pathologist from Duke University Medical Center, and this is a slide from the Duke University School of Medicine virtual slide box. So, uh, let's start by taking a look at some areas uh, which are uh, close to normal. Now, there is no normal tissue on this slide, but uh, there is some uh, uh, identifiable as to uh, tissue of origin. So, if we take a look... Uh, oh, if we take a look, it looks like we have uh, uh, intestine, uh, specifically uh, colon or large intestine. We see the distinct um, layers of the colon, the mucosa uh, defined by the muscularis mucosa down here, submucosa, muscularis propria, and uh, serosa. So we have our uh, layers of uh, normal colon. If we uh, come up and take a look at the uh, mucosa, uh, we see uh, the normal uh, epithelial cells of the colon, which contain uh, abundant mucin. These uh, mucin-filled cells we call goblet cells. We also see the lamina propria of the colon mucosa. The lamina propria typically contains inflammatory uh, type cells. Uh, lymphocytes, plasma cells, and occasional eosinophil. The uh, lamina, it's not uncommon for the lamina propria to have uh, a dense uh, lymphocytic or inflammatory cell infiltrate like this. We have the uh, muscularis mucosa. These are artifactual, uh, these are artifactual folds in the slide, so don't get confused by those. Now if we come along on the mucosa, we see that we get to a region where the mucosa is missing. So this is an area of ulceration. <clears throat> if we take a closer look, we'll likely see acute inflammatory cells, uh, neutrophils. Uh, we have a uh, complete absence of the mucosa and uh, what we call an ulcerative exudate, uh, a layer of uh, fibrin material uh, and acute uh, inflammation. And we also have a lot of chronic uh, inflammation or inflammatory cells here as well, lymphocytes, plasma cells, uh, etc. So this is an ulcer, and there's uh, multiple uh, different etiologies for ulcers in the colon. We can have uh, infectious uh, diseases, uh, such as bacterial, like uh, Salmonella, Shigella, E. coli. Uh, we can have uh, Clostridium uh, difficile, causing pseudomembranous colitis. We can have viral infections such as CMV in the immunocompromised population, adenovirus or HSV, herpes, simp herpes simplex virus, uh, ischemia caused by intussusception or uh, uh, torsion can cause uh, ulcers like this. And then we have uh, inflammatory uh, bowel diseases or IBD, uh, which can also cause uh, ulceration in the colon. Now, to diagnose an inflammatory bowel disease, we need more than an ulcer. We need to look for other changes in the colon which are suggestive of a chronic process or a process that's been ongoing for a while. Now, chronic colitis isn't as simple as looking in the uh, lamina propria and seeing inflammatory cells like lymphocytes or plasma cells because, as I mentioned, uh, lymphocytes and plasma cells are a common and normal component of the colon. So to look for chronic changes in the colon or chron uh, evidence of chronic damage in the colon, we look for things like crypt distortion. So normally our uh, crypts in the colon are test tube shaped. Oops, let me back up by one. I apologize for that. Normally the colonic crypts are test tube shaped and uh, uh, regular in appearance. But when we start to get distortion of the crypts, or distortion of the glands, excuse me, it's evidence that there's been damage and repair. Uh, here's a gland which is clearly not test tube shaped. More glands that are kind of abnormal in appearance. We also have some panath cells. Now panath cells are a normal part of the small intestine. These are these pink uh, uh, cells down here. Now, panic cells are a normal part of the small intestine, but if this were left colon, 
and we saw uh, Paneth cells, it would be evidence of uh, a metaplastic change associated with chronic damage or chronic uh, ongoing damage to the colon. So we see a couple signs here of uh, chronic, what we call chronic colitis. And then we see our ulcer. So this is uh, starting to look like uh, it could be inflammatory bowel disease, something like Crohn's disease or UC. Now, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are different clinical entities. They have uh, different, um, they have uh, different implications for the patient. For example, a patient with ulcerative colitis has an increased risk of developing uh, colon cancer and undergoes regular uh, surveillance biopsies of the colon to make sure they haven't developed uh, uh, colon cancer. Uh, Crohn's disease is uh, associated with a much lower uh, increase, not much lower, but a lower increased risk of uh, colon cancer. Uh, but they're uh, more prone to develop things like uh, fissures or um, uh, uh, transmural inflammation uh, of the colon, leading to uh, uh, fissures and other uh, um, uh, problems. Now, distinguishing the two can be tricky, but it is an important distinction, uh, at least for the purposes of surveillance screening and colon cancer risk. Histologically, <clears throat> uh, Crohn's disease is uh, said to have transmural inflammation, so inflammation all the way through the wall of the colon. And as we see here, we do have inflammation starting at the mucosa and going all the way down to the serosal surface of the colon. So this appears to be transmural inflammation. Uh, ulcerative colitis is usually limited to the mucosa. Uh, so that's one histologic feature suggestive of Crohn's disease. Um, when the patient is being evaluated by, evaluated by endoscopy, the other thing that the endoscopist can look for is whether or not the uh, inflammation is contiguous or uh, discontinuous. So uh, ulcerative colitis usually starts at the rectum and progresses up without uh, skip lesions or um, uh, it's usually continuous, whereas Crohn's disease uh, the lesions can be discontinuous. You can have uh, inflammation or ulceration on the right side of the colon without involvement of the left side or the rectum. You can have uh, inflammation, uh, acute ulceration, or chronic damage anywhere from the mouth all the way to the anus and Crohn's disease. Whereas ulcerative colitis starts at the rectum, uh, progresses uh, north from there. Well, first north, then west, and then south along the colon, and uh, does not involve small intestine whereas uh, Crohn's disease can involve small intestine. Uh, the other thing uh, associated with uh, Crohn's disease that we don't usually see in ulcerative colitis is granulomas. So the uh, astute uh, pathologist may even be able to look at this power and say, well, I think I see uh, something here which might be suggestive of granulomatous inflammation. I see some giant cells. Going a little closer, I see some giant cells. And I see some very poorly formed loose granulomas. Now, quite honestly, these look more like foreign body giant cell granu or foreign body granulomas, which you can get in the context of ulceration from anything. Uh, typically, the uh, granulomas associated with Crohn's disease are more well formed than this. Uh, the epithelioid macrophages are more well defined, and the granulomas themselves are more well defined. But we do have abundant granulomatous inflammation here here as well with these poorly formed granulomas. Uh, so uh, taken together, taken with this clinical picture, this this looks a lot like Crohn's disease. Um, and I think that's it. To recap, we have a colon with an ulcer. The ulcer contains an ulcer exudate. The ulcer exudate contains fibrin and neutrophils. It's a complete loss of the mucosal surface. We have some normal appearing mucosa over here. We also have some evidence of chronic damage or chronic inflammation. The evidence of chronic inflammation uh, is the Paneth cell metaplasia. So the appearance of these Paneth cells with uh, uh, eosinophilic granules, which are usually found in the small intestine. If these were on the left colon, it would be clear evidence of uh, metaplastic change associated with chronic uh, damage to the colon. We also see some evidence of crypt distortion. And finally, we see granulomatous inflammation. 
Uh, now, the granulomas aren't uh, classic uh, for Crohn's disease. Uh, in fact, granulomas can occur in many different contexts in the colon, uh, but uh, in this clinical setting, uh, altogether, this looks like a uh, Crohn's disease case. And that's it. Thank you.